Kristen has has done is is sort of the sorts of things that I hear a lot when I talk, um, especially to a lot of local agencies that I don't think get enough coverage. Um, but a lot of local success stories uh, of using local mobile that sort of go under the radar that we don't talk enough about. Um, we we often talk a big big game about the potential of mobile as a, as a local marketing uh, driver, but not enough cases about how they're doing. And that was sort of my interest here in pulling this panel together uh, and starting with Chris and a good case of, of local showing itself working at a very micro-local level. Uh, and, and that is to bring out some of these stories of what's working, uh, what parts of local mobile marketing are or are not working, where they're achieving scale and ROI, how much geo-targeting, for instance, works, or some of these other layers that, that, uh, that Kristen uh, uh, mentioned. I think that, that combination of geo-targeting and behavioral was really interesting in this case. It didn't just uh, depend on that, that sort of old saw of mobile that if you get them close to the store, you somehow have targeted them well. There are other considerations on the local level. And also the kinds of creative that work. I think you saw in, in Kristen's example, that it, was, it was compelling creative. At least I like I liked that sort of black, I like that color on black background. I think it's very drawing. I think it's very good about the site. It makes the site really pop too. To take the lead on this panel, uh, we have an old buddy of mine uh, and, of, and of the summits. Uh, Rachel Pasco is the VP of mobile at iCrossing. I think many of you know Rachel. She has been one of the uh, leading advocates of mobile for, uh, for a number of years. She's worked with countless brands on their mobile strategy uh, and most recently the co-author of uh, a new book that just came out about a month and a half ago called Mobile Marketing an Hour a Day. Please welcome an old friend, Rachel Pasqua. Just checking. Oh, okay. I am on. So thanks, Steve. So, you know, I, I oversee mobile for a sizable digital marketing agency and we do a lot of media and location and the, um, the premise and promise of location is becoming a, a bigger and bigger conversation with my clients um, and a, an ongoing conversation that I have with Steve, hence the panel that we've put together today. So I, I'd just like to, to start to ask my, my panelists to introduce themselves. Luann, do you want to start? Sure. Okay, working. Uh, my name's Luann Bryan. I'm the e-commerce and digital marketing manager for City Furniture, one of the largest uh, furniture retailers here in the state of Florida. We also own and operate Ashley Furniture Home Stores in the area as well. Uh, the website, uh, as of today, has been predominantly focused on product information and driving foot traffic. And what I mean as of today is I just found out that the shopping cart is launching tonight at midnight. <laughs> so it should be an interesting 24 hours for me. Uh, as far as mobile is concerned, we are developing our mobile site and a mobile strategy. And, uh, but as it relates to the, the panel today, I'll be bringing some of my past experiences within the home services and daily deals industries. Kristen Riva, so you heard from me before, so work with the brand for mobile, um, are from McGuire's mobile, Hispanic, you know, TV, radio, print, as well as I have the product side of wheel and tire category. Uh, Eric Vaughn, Monte Carlo, Las Vegas Resort, part of MGM Resorts International Group. Um, obviously, Vegas is a, is a big location-based city, and people love to check in and brag about being in Las Vegas. So there's a lot of opportunities for us to use those check-ins and use those interactions and try and bring them to us. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Craig Weinberg, I'm the mobile guy at Mindshare in North America. I oversee mobile marketing, strategy, media buying and planning for most of our North American client base. And I have to say, Rachel, best first time moderator ever. And I am very excited to hear about corn dogs and mobile next. I'm only a little preferential because I happen to work with Gary pretty closely. Hi, uh, Warren Zena. I'm uh, with uh, Woods with Dealey, a, a creative agency in New York City. I run the digital mobile practice there. I was previously with Phone Valley, which is the mobile arm of Publicist Group. And uh, I head up uh, driving all the strategy for my clients who are you know, from coming from a creative end, much like what Eric was discussing, how to integrate uh, mobile as a creative outlet for their branding and awareness and engagement for their, uh, for their, their clients and their consumers. All right, thanks everybody. So I think we have a good mix today of the brand side and the agency side. So um, kind of a nice 360 degree set of perspectives, some of which Kristen's already shared. Um, just to start, there were two things. Uh, well, so, you know, the holy grail of advertising has always been be where your customers are, right? And now thanks to mobile, we actually can be there, but there are obviously some, some, some roadblocks along the way. But there were, there were two things that kind of stood out to me from a couple of the great presentations this morning. One was Dion saying, without relevancy, the, uh, the impression is wasted. 
I thought that was very, very like poignant and relevant to what we're talking about because really there are a few things beyond you know stated preferences and and stated you know clicks to the, then location when it comes to to relevancy, and then Eric saying no one wants to be interrupted by an ad, um, and so again you know the the idea of location being so relevant to to who you are and what you want and what you're open to at that point in time. Um, so two things that I think really tee up our conversation nicely. One of the things when we were preparing for this panel that we started talking about, that I think Kristen talked about the workarounds, um, but I'd, I'd like to hear some, some other people on the panel weigh in, is the idea of the, that disconnect between location and real world action. So you know, the location based ad and then someone actually going to the register, you know, kind of a, a, a sort of halo of the, the showrooming effect. How do you offers aside, you know, someone redeeming a coupon aside, how do you make that connection? How do you prove that intent and that worth and that ROI as things become more ROI driven and that, you know, shiny new object syndrome of trying all different things in mobile location included starts to wear off. How do you bridge that gap? How do you, how do you handle that loss of data? Anyone want to start? Right, sure, I will. So uh, this, this, it's a great question, and we talked a little bit about this uh, individually before. And the idea is, uh, look, mobile is uh, the promise that mobile provides. Is a, it's the, the where question can be answered now, whereas before it really couldn't. It really was stuck at a PC. Now it, we really know where people are. But I think the issue is that without a coupon, which actually in a way is good news that we can't redeem coupons that well, we're forced to have to think of other ways to make that experience interesting for people. And we're hearing already that people love games, you know, they love ways to be rewarded through badge programs and uh, ways they can share experiences. But that surprising and delighting thing we talk about so much, which I, I don't like much that phrase, but you know, when people are somewhere looking for something specifically in a very specific location and they get a message that relates to that search, it enhances their experience. It can make your brand better. And we're finding there's a lot of ways that we're seeing this works, for example, in utilities. So uh, a program we did for the power up program for the, the power mat system is if I'm low walking around, I need to charge my phone. If I can find out right next to me, there's a place where I can charge my phone if I'm in a situation where my battery is low. I have a need at that moment where I'm standing right now. And if I can go to a place right now and get my battery charged in that moment of need, that brand has provided me with a localized value that really enhances that brand's experience for me. So it's finding out the difference between where the person is, what they're doing, and how to provide them something that means something for them at that moment. And mobile can promise that better than other people can, I think, other than other mediums can. So it's the trick like this one here. So I think it's less about saving money. It's really about providing some interesting value personally, what makes sense to me in that moment. Uh, yeah. So. It's interesting providing value. We we had a we launched a campaign last year, a new ad campaign, and it was we're all VIPs, and we wanted to find a way to to not just tell people that they were VIPs, but actually have have that happen to them when they showed up on property. So we we've got an outlet called the Pub, and it kind of sits in the back of the casino. You know, it's hard to get to. It doesn't sit right on the strip, and we we're trying to find ways to drive traffic there. So. What we did, so we created a badge on Foursquare, and if you got this badge, you had to check in, you know, three different places over two days, kind of thing. And you get the badge, and drove you to the pub to get a, a free custom flight of beer. And so we used this, and and every time you know somebody would show up and get the custom flight of beer, the the server had a, a soft key in the POS, and they they would hit that POS, and from that we could then look at the average check across the board of the pub and know what that was and then we could look at the average check for somebody that was there because of that badge and the average check was always higher when they were there for the badge so again that goes back to that you know tying that the ROI and that action in and it's still kind of a deal you know but it yeah. it it's a soft cost for us really there's there's really nothing there so it didn't it didn't hurt us at all it, it Definitely right. help. But it's kind of a microcosm too, because you're tying it to you know something like Foursquare, like it would be if you were tying it to an offer. You know, you're, you're it's on a it's kind of a very curated, targeted level. If you're tying it into a social network, if you're tying it into an offer, I think you know if we're we, we we're sort of we have we have two ends of the spectrum, right? You can do like a a post campaign study where you're tracking lift or you're tracking sales when there's no like direct connection. You can measure before and measure after. But honestly, in my experience, not every brand's open to it. Not every brand wants to spend that kind of money or, or 
you know, go through that kind of effort or they feel like maybe the four square is too limiting. Obviously, in your case, you know, with a casino, that's something where it's really going to work. You know, what if you're pampers? What if you're, I think Chris and I were having an you know, interesting conversation before about the, um, the, you know, the sort of disconnect when it comes to offers if you're a CPG brand versus a brand that really, you know, has national point of sale. Yeah, I mean, and definitely to what your audience is open to. I mean, I'm assuming, you know, Vegas, casino, younger phones are yeah. all important of meeting up with everyone. You know, we were at the SEMA show in Vegas or the, you know, it's the second biggest show in Vegas after CES. And we were doing Instagram, you know, to unlock, you could get a larger sample. So you, we just got the free one ounce samples, but if you Instagrammed and then, show, or, um, and we also did it for check-ins, you know, for it. And for that audience, it was like, what? And I do what? And for what? And so really, it's CES. So no, I was thinking CES and SEMA, which oh, is all SEMA. for okay. automotive aftermarket. I was going to say I mean, it's CES. Everyone's going to use Instagram. The OEMs are there, and it's a, it's a huge, huge show. But yeah. sometimes you have to know where your audience is is, is at. And so, um, in car care, not that there aren't younger people in car care, but it is a little skewed onto the older side. So it's just their habits aren't aren't there yet. So yeah, and I mean, I think it, it really is still a test and learn landscape. There's. I think we were very spoiled, and my agency does quite, a, we do a great deal of search marketing, and I, in some ways I think we're a little bit spoiled by search marketing because there's that easy equation of, I put this amount of money in, I get this number of clicks, and I get this return.